What is up guys, of course, welcome to our Wii 2 TV battle with Joel's rule, of course, the Scarander. And today we're going up against Monotoy or Chris, who are a GBA player, of course, so make sure to check this one, or check this guy out. He's actually a very, very good battler. I battled him before in the Open League, and he was a tremendous battler there, and he actually beat me, so I have a um, score to sell, as one say. And my team looks the part. Very surprised here, I should say, to see Dayenshi. And not sure in black. Outside of that, I am on point here. Um, really, this is a team that gonna beat me if he was gonna try something. And uh, like I said in my preview here, I only need to solve the magneton issue, and I'll win the match. Like there is nothing stopping Sister this game, and uh, I feel confident and that this is the straightforward game I want. And uh, yeah, outside of that, I mean, I'm gonna start with Frostlet here. I do believe Frostlet hurts the most of his team. Like I said, they're a bit surprised seeing Dayenji. And um, yeah, outside of that, I really need to keep my cool with most of my mons. I don't wanna reveal any sets more than necessary, as one say. Uh, and basically hope to break through early. Uh, my opponent here has a very, very tough team, and uh, it's naturally defensive. So I have to play the aggression game and. Um, that's really all I can say, like, I need to beat or break apart his team early and basically then hold and get a hold of that Magneton. Like, if Magneton is gone, I basically win this game because Blastoise might be the only response for Scissor, but I have so many response for that Blastoise, such as Heracross. So with all that said, let's go. So right, from the get-go, I'm gonna be extremely dumb here. I do stay in against the Yinchi matchup, which I definitely didn't see coming. And the worst part is that I was so sure it was going to go for Rocked, right? He goes right for Moonblast, and I am extremely lucky he doesn't go for Diamond Storm or anything like that, because that would have ruined my Frostless turn 1. So we preserve that, you know, it'll live, which is awesome. And I'm going to switch that out for Sceptile, basically to take the Moonblast again, since it's neutral. He goes for Hidden Power, it's actually Hidden Power Fire. So it hurts a lot to my Sceptile, but it's alright, Grass Knot is still a KO from this range, and obviously it's probably a Sash, and being especially defensive, I mean, Danger has a lot of defense. So I'll make evolve and I just go for the safe mood. I need to go for grass at this point. There is no other way for me actually pulling anything else. And uh, Chris Elia is gonna soak this really well. Like, I can't dent it. Like, Sceptile is not the man to do that. But I have, of course, good switching, such as, of course, the likes of Drapion. Drapion can take this guy on really well. And most of because it's highly likely that super effective damage onto me outside of, of course, the moon blaster like that, which of course hits me neutrally. So he goes for Ice Beam, showing in case of the course that it doesn't really do a whole lot. And I can see that I easily switch to his Blastoise, which of course he must have, right? I mean, that's the only switch in here. So I'm gonna go directly for Sceptile, and uh, yeah, that is exactly what happens. Now, here's where I do a bit of a weird play, or actually, it's a really, really dumb one. I go for Substitute for some reason. I had a reason going for Substitute because I'm showcasing that I got it. But not only that, knowing that Cresselia is a full HP, I am basically making sure I can't set up again. And the worst part about it is that there was no reason for it. There was no reason because Cresselia can still take on Sceptile. That play was dumb. And uh, I lose a very big perk there, of course, with Sceptile and whatnot. But, you know, it is what it is, and uh, that substitute is completely wasted. And uh, I have to switch out, of course, can't stand to go to Scissor this time around. Um, pretty much because Psychic and Ice Beam seems to be his only recovery outside of, of course, Moonlight. So, having that in mind, I basically thought, alright, we can probably send this matchup. Uh, we can set up freely, Sword Stance and whatnot, and it shouldn't really worry too much. And I felt really safe doing just so. So he'll go to Gligar, so that's alright. Uh, the thing is here, it kind of dawned on me that he is going to easily go for Rocks this time, right? I need to switch up Frost Lads. I was thinking maybe Knock Off 2, and if he goes for Knock Off, I'll lose my Aka Berry, and I can't take on Magneton, so I need to switch out. So Frost Lads was a bigger and smarter choice, and luckily for me, he goes for Stellar Frost. So there he is to say, I don't have the spinner to see, don't need it. And uh, I'm just going to go for Shadow Ball, since it has, of course, a Gligar, I can't go for Thunderbolt. I knew Blast was going to come in predicting the Ice Beam, but I couldn't risk it. And at the same time, I would have been locked into this position, which is something I don't want to be. And we do a lot of damage. We do a lot of damage on Blastoise. He's going to make up all this time. And uh, I'm just going to keep going. I'm basically second Frostlet here. And it's really unfortunate because I played Frostlet so badly. Uh, it's alright, but at the same time, I should not have done the plays I did with it. We do get a special defense drop, which means that. I can at least now switch into course Thunders and go for Dark Force freely without really having to worry about it. Uh, so we lose Frostless here, and that's that's too bad. That is really, really bad. 
So Gabe Thor is gonna come in and uh, let me just say this. Like I said, Dark Horse is the way to go. And he doesn't really have any switchings here. Outside of the Yinji, maybe we could take that. But he would wheel that one down. And he is actually gonna go to Scallipede here. And I know it's gonna outspeed. Uh, if it is adamant, I know I can live ahead since I have some defensive or HP investments, so I can at least live one poison jab uh, without any ramifications. But, um, yeah, Hex is a factor in this game too. We kind of forget about that sometime. And we are sadly gonna lose Thunderous here. The thing is, he was definitely adamant at that part, and had he tried to attack him again, I would still outspeed due to my investment. But we lose Thunderous there, and like I said, he could just switch into energy afterwards either. So it's not a decisive factor, but it does suck because I had such a huge opportunity there. But uh, yeah, you know, it is the game we play. <laughs> so anyway, I can feel really go to Scissor, and Scissor will definitely pressure him out. And this time I really felt that I really need to set up, I need to find something, right? So I'm gonna go for Sword Stance, I'm gonna keep going for Sword Stance. Uh, Gligar is not threatening me out whatsoever. Uh, so he goes for Earthquake, and I guess he wanted to try you know, what kind of damage he does to me, and that is a nope. And I just keep going for Sword Stance. Sadly, I should say, I do decide here to go for Roost instead of keep Sword Stance, and I don't really know why I did that. Uh, to be completely honest, there was actually no reason for me of doing just so. And uh, yeah. The, the reason I say it like that is because Chrysalia is going to come in. I was feeling Magnus was going to come in, but of course Chrysalia is going to come in. I was feeling it may be having a power ice here or a power fire. But even so, I really have to go for Denting because there is not a whole lot of my mods against Denting Chrysalia at this point. So, had I gone for another Swords Stance, I would actually have killed the Chrysalia. So, you know, it is what it is. I do lose my Aka Bear here. Uh, we still have a lot of HP left. Uh, I'm definitely in an area where I could take in a power fire from Magneton. So, um, even with Aka Berry Pop, since I have a lot of the or it's a roll at least. Uh, so, he's gonna bring Magneton here, and I just checked in case against Switch Out, which I cannot. And I decided to go for Super Power, risking it. And um, he decides to go for Volt Switch to guarantee not risking it, which means that I am now in an area where I will lose my uh, my sister. There's no way I can take now a hidden power fire, so I screwed that up really badly. And Mono does a really good play, actually guaranteeing that he can't take me out. So that is really, really, really good of him. And uh, basically, this what it is. He wins the Magneton situation, which was something I was really, really fearing. That, you know, if I lose um, my scissor, then, you know, it's gonna be a one-way trip for me. But the thing is, I still have three mons left, and there are three really mighty ones. First of all, Sceptile is fast enough, of course, to actually outspeed the Magneton. So I can just go for hit the ground. It doesn't really have any switchings here, outside of, of course, Gligar, which take too much heavy damage here. So we will decide to sack off Magneton. We're gonna pop that ton. And the mons he has left now is, of course, Scalipede and uh, Gligar. Now here's where we got a bit unfortunate. Due to the prior events here, he now is no I have substitute, and worst part is I have too much uh, or too little HP to pull off a sub. So due to my play against Cresselia, Septal do not do what he was supposed to. I gave that one to play that play away, and he's gonna get it, basically him out of here. And yeah, here's the worst part, and uh, this is basically you know settling the face here. What I should have done. Here is I gone to Drapion and go for knockoff. I decided to go for Heracross and go for knockoff. It might not seem like such a bad play since they're both rather healthy. The thing is here that I should have known he would switch to Gligar, right? You should definitely have done that. I, for some reason, stopped thinking about that. I thought for some reason his Gligar had air lays to take out my Heracross and risking it. Of course, it doesn't have that, and the Gligar walls me completely. And I, the knockoff combination with uh, Ice Fang is pretty much a 92% chance of killing him. Plus, with Shukaberry, Drapion would have survived against the Scallopede if he decides to stay in. So I feel that this play, it wasn't really thought out. And uh, I'm coming to a situation where I need to push the Gligar to a 75% area of HP, which is not easy to do. It's basically it's too close to combat without him roosting it up. And that's it's not going to be an easy task. I do decide to go for close combat eventually to force him to go for Earthquake and guarantee and killing me. Um, it's really not really what I wanted and thinking about it, I should have probably actually kept going for knockoff, uh, making him of course, or you know, stalling out the Earthquakes, I guess. But I would not have win this setup. And it kind of bothers me because I had also a set before this match, I was thinking, what about I have a nature power with uh, an ice berry to KO the Gligar, trying to avoid this situation. 
So I feel I push myself into a corner and I'm definitely are in that sweet spot where, like I said, I need to pressure this Gligar down and it's not an easy task and at the same time, I really, really want him to kill, of course, my Heracross. So we're in that situation now, I feel that I have at least, I have a small chance of killing him, it's basically it's around 70% uh, for my Ice Fang with the uh, Drape Gun to kill him. And that's my only shot here, that's the only way that I could pull this off. And, um, well, guys, I'm, I'm gonna be completely frank, 70% is a big chance, right? You know, that would be the big turning point of this battle, really, so you know, we still have a good shot, but sadly, it wasn't meant to be, and the Ice Fang will do pretty much minimal damage. And uh, it's right, you know, he gets the earthquake going, he popped the Shocker Berry, which I need against the Scalipede, and due to this, we'll lose this battle. Uh, we'll lose it 1-0, you know, it is actually quite right. I do believe Mono plays this game really nicely. Uh, he preserves his winning condition, if anything, you know, keeps himself somewhat healthy. I do get a few situations where I get a major momentum, but I do also believe that I play my trump cards, such as, of course, substitute. Uh, um, Sceptile really, really too early, and I played Frostlass really, really bad at the start there, and I could have lost it turn 1, so this game turning into 1-0 in my opponent's favor isn't really too shabby, but at the same time, like I said, had I played Drape Gun instead of Heracross here in the end, I would have guaranteed pretty much winning this game, because even if I push down, of course, uh, the, um, the Gligar into the 92% area of HP, or 8% that is, uh, Heracross would still come in and wrap that up with a knockoff, and having a healthy um, Heracross against the Scalipede would have meant that my Heracross would have won that matchup. So I screw up the, ba the end really badly, but at the same time, Mono plays this game really well, and he is just as deserving as me of winning this game, if anything, really. So, with that said, you know, obviously the Afterthoughts has to be in here, and I will say this, and it's a very, very bad cop out, but I have a really, really stressful week. Uh, I'm recording this on a Tuesday, and uh, Basically, I'm going away um, <laughs> Wednesday morning, and I'm away basically Friday night. And at that, I really don't had the time to actually have this game, and I feel that 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 may have threw me off uh, a little bit because obviously the weekend before that I was also away. Um, but that's not an um, excuse really. But a limited time span, yeah, sure. But I built a team right. Like the team that I built is exactly made for defeats at Tampa Bay Lux Race. It's no doubt about it. It just execution is not there. Uh, I am I'm doing the stress plays. I'm doing the dumb plays, and I'm doing them to the very end. And eventually, you know, that catches up with you. Um, it's not like Temple uh, Luxray or Monotype plays a perfect game or anything like that. But he plays the game right. He keeps himself defensive. He, he, he gets out of those tougher situations. So in the end, he's definitely more deserving of this game due to that. It actually. Keeps, keeps himself rather healthy against a very, very tough matchup. So, to monitor, if anything, you know, GG, and really, you, you play this game right. Um, and you are, like, a 1 0 victory is. Uh, I mean, that's. that's to, to say it frank, I mean, it could have been bigger, uh, depending on what set you would decide to go for if you went for Diamond Storm and whatnot with Dianchi. So, I'm lucky to get up this 1 0. But. Um, yeah, the execution was ex it was extremely badly, and uh, um, like I said, the team is right, but uh, I needed to play a lot smarter here, I didn't do that, and you can't do that against a guy such a monotoy. He, he, he'll, he'll beat you up for it, and uh, he's proven that one time before, so yeah, I'm a bit frustrated about the loss, but not frustrated against my opponent for winning more in my execution. I feel I could have, I should have done this better. I, like I said, I even had a win. Uh, till the very end actually, but didn't act on it and uh, That's how you lose the game like if you don't see those situation. It's it's going to be a defeated one uh, it, It's simply as that uh, But with all that said like I really like this game I think it's a very very like change of the momentum against between us are really cool to watch uh, It just it bothers me that it gets it to that complete stop with Gligar like that is where I obviously realized that I messed up <laughs> like I said, the worst part is that I knew I had a, a nature game or nature power set with Hera Cross that would have solved that. But uh, I didn't do that. Uh, I was so sure I needed a Soul's Best and it didn't really matter in the end. So, you know, wow. Like, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so, we are one for one right now, but we're still in a very good position, I believe, depending on how the other players are, of course, playing. But, um, I mean, we still have um, actually a big 
win from the first week and uh, only a small loss this time. And we're going against Xena next week. And uh, yeah, you know, I'll, 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 I'll pull that off. Um, we'll see if we bench and and stuff like that, so I have to prep for that. And of course, really with all I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this or anything. I, I really, really like this game, like I said. It's, it's too bad it ends the way it did, but you know, if you don't play good enough, you're gonna lose. And this is one of those situations where if you miss to act on it, it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass. And Monotoy is a good player, and uh, you, you simply can't let up on a player such as him. It's not possible, you lose through in that. So, we, yeah, with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this team, and I hope you enjoyed this match, if anything. And I see you next week, of course, the next team analysis against Xenon or the Salamence. Like, I had a very, a very tough name to say. I'm, I'm not going there yet. I'll, I'll give that one to Viking Render. So, with all that said, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye. <laughs>